Hi everyone, welcome to another new episode of ESL Talk. In today's episode, we're going to look at some alternative roles in the field of ESL and maybe some ways that you can still work in this field without actually doing traditional face-to-face -face or online teaching. Before we get started today, I'd just like to say again, a huge thank you for all your support in the last couple of episodes. Um, we had really good feedback on last week's episode, um, all about um, ELT, professional development and financial literacy for English teachers. So thanks for all the great comments and feedback on that episode. And also, um, as we mentioned before, you can check out our new website, esl-talk.com. You can follow us on Instagram at ESL Talk Podcast or you can also subscribe for all the latest episodes as they drop each and every Wednesday. So let's have a little look and a little discussion about this topic of um, alternative roles in the field of ESL. And why is this something that we should really pay attention to and talk about? Well, as we probably know, um, you know, the world of ESL is changing all the time. The different um, things that we need to do, the responsibilities, you know, the traditional jobs, platforms, um, you know, one-to-one -one teaching that we do can become quite repetitive, can become quite boring, can become quite tiring. And as teachers, we need to maybe think about some different ways that we can use our knowledge, our skills, and our expertise um, in other ways. So what we're going to talk about today in our interview with our guest, Liz, is some different ways that we can achieve this. Um, so it, we're going to look at things like web design. We're going to look at things like graphic design. We're going to look at things like a curriculum design. And we're also going to assess you know, being a digital assistant or a virtual assistant. Um, because if you can have a virtual assistant who's actually worked in education, who actually is a teacher, who has some of the same knowledge that you have, it will make life a lot easier. A lot of us as teachers, we have, you know, websites to maintain, we have students, uh, payments, um, documents, correspondence we have to keep up with. We have um, different social media platforms where we post content regularly. Maybe it's Instagram, maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's LinkedIn. Maybe we have groups um, and online uh, courses that we have to manage as well. So there's so many different things for us to think about as teachers, and there's so many different headaches that we have as teachers. So what we want to talk about a little bit today is how to maybe navigate some of those challenges get the help that you need, um, get the support that you need. And maybe if you're thinking about taking a step back from teaching or you want to look at some different ways to make income as an ESL teacher, we can discuss some ways that we can do that in today's interview. So before we get into the interview, if you are looking for ways to save time, save money and, you know, organize your lessons and have lots of materials to use for your lessons, um, let me tell you a little bit about our partner, which is Crystal Clear, which is esl-curriculum.com. They have well over 500 plus interactive lessons, digital lessons ready to go. Simply sign up get started, find the level that you want to teach, find the course that you want to teach, and you can get started on that right away with a two-week free trial. Um, that also includes courses for kids, adults, business English, IELTS, writing, and speaking. So there's so much there for you. So do take a look and hopefully you can find that useful. All right, let's get into the interview. Hi, Liz. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this week on ESL Talk. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, it's great to talk to you because I think a lot of teachers um, might be in your shoes or might be thinking about going into your shoes, metaphorically, um, thinking about other non-traditional teaching roles and how they, they might work for them. Um, so first of all, Liz, could you tell me a little bit about your journey first into teaching and how you got into the position that you're in today? Absolutely. So I was teaching for about 15 years. I taught in Florida for a while and then in Korea and Taiwan most recently. Um, and I just kind of wanted a little bit more flexibility, seeing everyone get to work from home during the pandemic and just kind of wanted to make my own schedule with things. So I came back to the U.S. this past summer 
and really just started exploring a lot of career options. I looked into like instructional design and things that were all in the education field in some way. And I really, what I started with was taking a lot of these online summits and workshops where you just hear from people who have made these kinds of transitions and what they've done. So that led me to what I'm doing now, which is mostly like web design and development and helping other teachers and business people with tech things behind the scenes. Yeah, that's amazing. I think a lot of people do need help and they don't always know where to begin or where to start or a lot of teachers think, oh, that's something I could do, which is which is great. So a lot of teachers are trying to transition into these more non-traditional support roles, not necessarily teaching, as you said. Why do you think that might be? Why are people making that switch? Or why did you make that switch? I know you've said a little bit, but why do you think other teachers might want to make that switch? Yeah, I my personal opinion, I think teaching is just getting more demanding as the years go by and just a lot of challenges in the classroom. And, you know, everyone's got their own reason. It might just be they've been doing it for a while and are ready for something new. Yes. But I think technology just lets us do more than we could when we started. Yeah, technology has really changed what we do and, and how we do it. And I think, I think traditional teaching doesn't really exist in a lot of places nowadays. So it's even that's changing and we need to be, you know, very skilled in lots of different things. And, and if we're not, then... Why not get that help or get that support or transition into that if that's something you're interested in? Um, so what are some of the different ways then that online English teachers can utilize their skills and experience without traditional teaching as we as we think about it? Right. So I'm really liking there's a lot of emphasis on people coming out with courses now, especially mm-hmm. rather than like a one to one or even a small group teaching model, I think creating materials that you can reuse and then support students through that is really good. Um, Yeah, even just experimenting with teaching for a company or teaching on your own. I think there's just a lot of ways that you can be an online English teacher these days. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think beyond that, like you said, you know, doing things like graphic design, web design, um, you know, working on curricula, designing materials. These are a lot of other roles as well that that can be done without traditional teaching. And I think like you said as well, you know, if you have a certain skill or a certain passion or something you enjoy, then why not try to follow that? Because we have all the tools to support us now, right? Yeah. I, I've been loving kind of making that transition. And, you know, in the, the classroom, you just kind of use things and make it quickly. But then yes. when it's for your own brand, you can and to spend more time on it and have fun with it. It's nice. Exactly. Yeah. So as you've kind of been through this journey now, Liz, what skills should teachers learn if they want to transition into non-traditional roles? Do they need to take lots of courses and lots of certifications? What what are the steps would you say in your experience? So I would say maybe not so much certifications. I don't know who is really looking at those. Um, One of my big focuses the last few months has really been trying to learn business skills. If you're trying to do things on your own, trying to learn about laws where you live and accounting and those things just as a teacher that I wasn't very familiar with before. But I think just choosing what you want to learn. There's a lot of good free and low cost ways out there to continue your education, not necessarily Mm -hmm certification program or another degree um yeah and i think we were we were even talking uh recently about the um the cookies consent and the privacy policies and things that was something i i didn't really know that much about so talking to you about that really helped me to kind of figure out oh this is something i need so thank you for sharing that with me um and again that's useful very helpful um so yeah these are some things to consider um when it comes to challenges, then um, these some of these challenges that you faced, how can these be you know useful? So thinking about moving from the classroom to outside the classroom, um, how have these challenges helped you in what you're doing now, and how could they help other teachers? So one of the challenges in this transition is going from always being surrounded by people, other teachers, other students, and things like that, to really kind of doing my own thing. 
So it's really being proactive about finding communities that I can reach out to for support either on Facebook or other websites and things like that. Um, I think you've kind of always got someone looking out for you in the classroom and just making sure you keep doing that. Yeah. So I guess it could be a little bit, a little bit intimidating, a little bit lonely as well, like just being on your own after being surrounded by students or colleagues or other teachers. Right. And it's like, why do I get that help and support? So exactly. um, Right. but I think there are a lot of communities and a lot of spaces that exist for you to be able to collaborate and share ideas. Yeah, there are. And even when I was just starting to figure out what I wanted to do next, just on Facebook, it was like every week, a new group about transitioning teachers would pop up and I'd be like, oh, let me join that and see see who I can connect with here and what I can learn. That's really encouraging to know that there is all that support out there to help people who maybe, you know, they they like teaching, maybe they want to do it less or they want to totally, you know, move away from that. That's good to see that there's that support available. Um, so two of the main skills that we kind of, we identified were communication and collaboration skills. So how important are these and how can you use these skills to, you know, connect and work with colleagues, administrators, parents, perhaps in the current role? I really think whatever business you're in, communication and collaboration are key. Um, and I think being in the classroom where you're you're speaking all the time, you're communicating with parents and administrators, trying to have a nice polish on the way that you speak, I think it helps you just deal with people in general. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, even now... You, know, you said working with um, other teachers who have their own companies or their own courses or websites. Again, you can transfer those skills quite easily in terms of being concise, being clear. How do I communicate this well? And again, because you have that mindset as a teacher, you kind of have a good understanding of what the client needs and how to give it to them, how to deliver it to them. Is Would I be right in saying that? Yes, that's yes. perfect. Yep. Yes, I think so. Because um you know, a lot of teachers that I've that I've talked to, they said, "Oh, I have a virtual assistant, or I have a, someone helping me do X, Y, Z." But they're not a teacher, so I find it frustrating, or it was a waste of time or a waste of money. So, again, I think having that teaching background can be invaluable, really, in these kinds of roles. Yeah, it is. If you've had a teaching assistant in the class, or something yes. like that, or anyone you need to share with. Exactly. So. In terms of technology and tools, there's so many available now and there's so many different ways to help support teachers or even, you know, um, can teachers can even use in their own classrooms. So how have you adapted to these tools and technologies and, and how can you use them in your current roles? So I've always loved just exploring whatever new technologies are out there. And I, it, it's so wide open, like if you want to do graphic design things. I think Canva offers a lot. Mm -hmm. It's not the newest thing out there, but um, I don't know what to say for this one. Sorry. (laughs) That's okay. Um, Would you say that, you know, there's a lot of alternative tools that are popping up now. So things for like, you know, managing your schedule, things for um, building websites, things for building curriculum and lessons and things like that. So would you encourage um, other teachers to maybe, you know, learn about them, try them, experiment with them and, and find a better way to do certain things? Would that be, you know, something that they could try? Yes. Oh, I, I think that's a great idea. Like having a website out there, there are, you know, Wix and Squarespace and there's things that are more drag and drop now that you can create on your own and all the, the scheduling where you're, you might have students in different countries in the world make it really easy to connect. Um, the interactive types of lessons that you can do where your students can actually do things on their screen is really helpful. Yeah, exactly. And it, it takes a little bit of time. It can be a bit intimidating to mm. you know start to get used to these tools. But once you use them and, and master them, then they can be real assets, I think, to your business um, for sure. So if there are you know teachers listening who want to maybe move away or take a step back from the classroom a little bit, what challenges or obstacles might they face and, and how would they maybe address them? You know, what, what's your experience being with this, Liz? 
I think the biggest challenge is going from having a steady paycheck to Mm -hmm. (laughs) kind of having to figure things out on your own. Right. And it it can go both ways where you might want to just stick in your job until you think that you might be on track to replace your income. Or if you've saved up enough money and you can take a little bit of a leap of faith and just kind of work through it, know that times might be tough for a bit, but you'll come out doing what you want to do. And if you kind of had some struggles with teaching, I think just giving yourself the time to figure out, I think that was the biggest thing for me. I didn't want to just jump into a next job or a next career. I wanted to make sure what I'm doing now feels right for me. That's a great, yeah, that's a great way to look at it. And it's not Mm -hmm. easy. People think, oh, I can just replace my income in in a day or a month or three months even. No, it it takes time to build. And again, you have to make mistakes and learn along the way and and figure things out as you go. But definitely it is possible um, for sure, provided that, you know, you take the right steps and you you actively work towards that goal as well. Um, So, What are some of the services that you offer, Liz, and how can our listeners um, reach out to you if they want to find out more about what you offer? Oh, thanks for asking. So my main thing these days is web design and web development, and my website has recently gone live for that. It's ehoustonstudio.com. And then I'm actually just this week starting working on another website for kind of like tech virtual assistant types of things, which might be more beneficial to some of your listeners. So things like if social media management or graphic design or scheduling or anything like that for your online teaching journey. And the website for that will be elizabethhouston.tech, but it's coming soon. (laughs) Wonderful. I'll post that in because I know a lot of teachers do need help with those kinds of things and they need a teaching mind who can actually understand exactly what they need. So I think this is actually really nice that you're able to offer this. So I will post those links um, in the description for this episode. Um, And that's really useful. Thank you for giving us such insights into this and kind of showing us that there is another way beyond just teaching in the classroom in the traditional sense. This is fantastic. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad that we got to chat about these things. This was, yes. this was great. Likewise. Thank you so much, Liz. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the interview with Liz. Um, you can find her online at ehoustonstudio.com or elizabethhouston.tech. Um, so she'll be there to help you with all your support needs um, for your online ESL business. And also um, just reflecting, I hope you found it useful and can start to think about some other ways that perhaps you can work in the field of ESL without necessarily just teaching. Um, So if you do have any questions or you do have any feedback, feel free to um, send us a message on Instagram at ESL Talk Podcast. You can also send us an email, um, eslTalkPodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to be a guest on a future episode, then feel free to get in touch. You can go to our website, esl-talk.com. You can click the Be a Guest um, link, fill in a couple of details, and then we can set up a time for you to join us on the podcast to talk about an area of interest that you um, really would love to discuss with our listeners. And finally, if you are an online ESL teacher and you're looking for curriculum or materials which you can use for your classes, feel free to check out our partners at esl-curriculum.com, which is crystal clear ESL. They have over 500 interactive digital lessons which you can use, um, which cover all different areas of English teaching from kids to adults. There's also speaking courses, writing courses, IELTS courses, business English courses, and all of these lessons are very easy to use, um, include homeworks, um, interactive tasks, and so on. So they're very, very um, engaging for the learner too. So please do feel free to check that out. You can get a free two-week trial at esl-curriculum.com. And hopefully that will save you some time and hopefully make the planning process a lot easier for you. All right, that is it for this week. Uh, We look forward to seeing you again next week for another brand new episode. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like what you hear, feel free to drop us a five-star review on iTunes or Spotify. We'd really appreciate it and it helps support the podcast as well. All right, thanks so much. Stay safe, be well. We'll see you next week for another new episode. Bye-bye.